What's everybody? Welcome to Livecast. Hold on while I fix my own pack. Because nobody gives a shit about me here. Nobody checks my mics or anything to find out if the shit's going to work. <laughs> oh and I can't God. hear. Oh, this guy. Sad. It's not like that's start. the I hate you starting wear. like this. It's the pack you You know wear. this shit. I'm sorry. You know this shit pisses me off. Okay. We're all right here. No, you're all right, man. I'm not all right. Just pray that there isn't a pack mentality attack in this room, which... There we go. Look, we're all good, and hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sam Livecast. It is Thursday, November something. I got right? Mike freaking Isabella sitting in the over there by Kelly. Mm-hmm. I don't want to look like a clown to him, and now look. Okay, well, let's just... I look like rolling. a douche. Well, you made yourself a clown. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Thursday night. I'm glad to be here. Me too. Uh, it's our Friday. We're not back again until Monday. Not that that's a, you know, a bad or a good thing. It just is what it is. Um, we got a lot to talk about. Let's start with this. Does anybody know who Dakota Duran is? Hmm. Never heard. Not you know heard that name? Yet. Dakota Duran. Never heard the name. I have never heard the name before in my life, ever. But? But Dakota Duran's birthday came up in my phone today, in my calendar. Oh, okay. Weirdo. And you want to know what's even weirder? There was another name that I've never seen, let alone heard before. Yeah, you know what's weird? Two days ago. I Oh, oh, I had that too. You have Dakota Duran? Not Dakota Duran. Who is I that? Had... No, no, did you have your... Now you're... Shan's not mic Shannon's not mic'd. I had Dan Schneider. Oh, God. Do we know You're- Dan Schneider? <laughs> no. Because he popped up on the 12th on wait, Monday. And wait, wait. Like, so Dan? Shannon knows everything about now that, iPhones. Now that f- Facebook is actually part of your iPhone, when you... Shut up. It actually, every contact... Shut up. I don't will, want that. You can turn it off. I'll show you how to do it after the show. <laughs> right. And all those ridiculous... But it, it attaches it, like all your contacts. So should, shouldn't that contact. shit be something that they say, do you want this? I know. We're going to give you people that you don't know... We're going to give you their birthday information <laughs> in your phone. That's why all that shit's hey, probably... Facebook by the way, by the way Dakota Duran, I apologize <laughs> if I don't know you, but I don't know you. And while I'm looking at this on my thing, why the fuck is chicken so expensive? <laughs> what do you mean? I was at the store today looking at chicken. It's really expensive. Like Just, a little pack. Have you ever seen when they show chickens in like the giant coop where they raise the things mm. what do they call that is that a coop like the massive farms the massive farms the massive coop right have you ever seen how many chickens can somebody find a picture of that yeah we'll get on that. it's not oh, like it's God. not like it's Don't not like eight that. chickens and because they're rare this shit's expensive factory farms factory Wait, farm chickens are rare right now i'm saying it's not like there's only they're only raising eight each farm therefore they're super expensive because they're rare Ew. look at how many fucking chickens there That's, are oh god that just and makes you know how like expensive the chicken like a like a thing of chicken thighs is like eleven dollars it just seems crazy to me one of my first jobs was working on a chicken farm oh <laughs> no way one of the jobs we had to do oh. is they get the chicks in get the chair come the here chess? come here <laughs> get the chair come here for a second i we don't have know to if i'm this. gonna be able to look at you again Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. The cameras aren't it's set like, up for this. We yeah. got it. It's here okay. comes Slappy's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so the chicks so came in. You worked in a place like that? Yes. And but, what did you do? What was your job? Did you have to ring well, any necks? When the chicks were first born, they're yeah. born somewhere else. They hatch them somewhere else. And so they bring them in on these big, huge semis. And they'd have these all crated up. And so we'd have to count the chicks out and put them in these crates or cages yeah. or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And you had to wear these masks because there's so much down in the air from the chicks because there's like thousands and thousands of them. Well, then when the chickens grow up, then we have to reach in, grab the chickens by their feet, and then <gasps> shove them in another crate that gets shipped off where they do the How slaughtering. How did you do that? <laughs> For a couple summers. Oh, it was good God. money. I mean, oh, it was when I was like 12 years old. Wow. wow. It was under the table money. She's from Ohio. Holy oh, shit. They start them young <laughs> they there. They do different things out there. Did you ever have to kill the chickens? No, I never killed them. Did you ever ask to? No. Just checking. <laughs> I also detasseled corn. Do you want to hear about that? Detasseled? Yeah. Popcorn. Hold on, wait, wait. <laughs> Does anybody here know what detasseling corn would even mean? I don't know. Does it have something to do with 
deflowering. <laughs> no. It is a while. Jeez. So popcorn. Are you kidding? You know what? Shut <laughs> up, because you know it's coming out of your mouth next. I would never have put detasseling corn with deflowering corn. <laughs> Because you know what that Sam. means, right? Yeah, I think we should get a little back on track. All right. I'll okay. tell you about that later. Okay, go back to your spot. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just it really just struck me as something that was ridiculous. <laughs> How expensive chicken is. <clears throat> so last year, Fox here in San Diego asked me to be a, a um, I guess, an expert on their turkey hotline Thanksgiving morning. Yes. Like the, but, like the Butterball hotline? You call up and you go, I don't know how, how long to cook this or what do I cook it with or how do I make this or whatever, black kind of stuff, right? Should you not be thinking of these things? Should you not have maybe a, a plan in place prior to Thanksgiving? If the people? On the day, if on the day of Thanksgiving you're calling and going, how do I make a turkey? Do you not have a problem? You a know what I think? Uh, here's what I think. I think... Um, Thanksgiving is daunting for a lot of people, specifically first and maybe second timers. Mm -hmm. And think of the young couples that are out there whose turkeys have always been made by the family at their traditional Thanksgiving. Now, they've gone off to school and, and they've left and then they've got married and they have their own Thanksgivings that they want to start their own traditions for. Mm -hmm. And they don't know what the hell to do. They get everything, and maybe they call home and they ask what the hell to do, but maybe they find themselves staring at, hopefully, a defrosted turkey Thursday morning going, oh, I don't think I know exactly what to do. And maybe there's instructions on the butterball bag or whatever kind of turkey you get, but, but the, I'm telling you, when I did this last year, it was one phone call after another. Mm -hmm. And some people just going, what can, what can I serve with this? What uh, it, would you say that there were any common questions? Like, would you? The I'd say the temp the, the temperature is definitely important, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and how long per per pound? And most people just bake a turkey. Tradi that's the traditional way. Yeah, right? I, I'm gonna guess, and I don't have statistics on this, and maybe somebody one of you guys can find this. But I'm gonna my guess would be eighty percent of the turkeys are gonna be roasted. Okay, here, I have a question for, for everybody out there in livecast world, yeah. or Facebook world. How do you guys prepare your turkeys? So, look, here's your options. Mm -hmm. You roast a turkey. You deep fry a turkey. You smoke a turkey. And I suppose in some cases you could barbecue a turkey, though a whole turkey is kind of tough or, to barbecue, right? Or what? you take a duck and stuff it inside a chicken and then stuff it inside a turkey. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's no, so bad. or I got, whatever so, way around. So that is. Channel Six e called, uh, emailed uh, two days ago, and said, mm -hmm. "Would you come in and show how to make a turducken with Reuben?" And I wrote back and I said, "As far as I know, nobody west of Georgia makes their own turduckens. Mm -hmm. That's just shit that you buy, man." Yeah, I mean, it's a chicken in a duck. Wait, which goes first? Chicken in a duck in a turkey with layers of stuffing in between but but you've got to debone the ass <laughs> yeah that's you got to take all the bones out of these things first right that's yeah bad. it's mental okay as much as i love thanksgiving yeah we've got a pretty unbelievable guest tonight that we i think do. you should introduce oh, no, what do you have to say you say it like that and then it goes to his head you know <sighs> he <laughs> came in here with his entourage tonight and so now I'm gonna be awkward and everything well, why Should don't you we go ahead up? and introduce him? Yeah, to explain who he is, maybe. All right. So here's the deal. This man, we'll call him Mike. In fact, we'll go a little bit further. We'll call him Mike Isabella. He was on season six of Top Chef. Mm -hmm. He made it to number seven. Seven? Made it to number seven. Which means that he was three people still away from going to the top. But we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> Then he was on Top Chef All Stars, and he made it to the finale, and he got screwed by Richard Blaze, who won. It's not right. He should have won. His food was better. Everybody knows it was better. <laughs> he has two restaurants in D.C. He has a brand new book, a brand new book, 
that we're going to talk about. And he's right there. There he is. Oh, yeah. Okay. There he is. Mike Isabella. Let's call him, Mike. Let's get in the kitchen. We're going to do something a little different. We're going to start. Applause. Yeah. We're going to start with Mike in the kitchen so we can get his thing in the oven. And then we're going to sit down and we're going to talk. Here we go. All right. Your loves are up. So, Chef Isabella. What's going on? How are you? How I know you we've already been talking for, you know, an hour, but. Yeah, you know. You have to do this. So tell us what you're doing. Wait for Shannon. Okay, so tell us you've you've done your you've done your prep. Yeah, I got I got set up, you know, so I can so I can spend some time talking with you. You know what I'm we, saying? We want to do I that. I don't want to be slaving over the kitchen all night. And we don't want you slaving over the kitchen. We <laughs> want to hear you talk trash about uh, <laughs> about everybody. <laughs> about everybody. <laughs> well, I'm doing a dish that's in the book. It's uh, it's our roasted cauliflower. It's also at my restaurant, Graffiato. It's a signature vegetable dish. Um, and perfect, I would say, for Thanksgiving. It's great Absolutely for Thanksgiving. Absolutely perfect it's for easy. Thanksgiving. Yep. It's easy. It tastes awesome. It's, you know, and cauliflower is huge during, during Thanksgiving. Huge. So, I mean, right, so, right, right. so it's a fun. So, basically, I, some, I took a head of cauliflower and, and, I, and I, uh, I cut them up and I just broke them in pieces into little florets, you know. Right. Pretty much broke them up. I, I, don't, I don't like to cut them because when you cut them, it kind of looks like Chinese food, you know. You have like those pieces of broccoli sliced down and this yes, and that. Yes. So, so, whatever. So, I got a little bit of brown butter. Not the healthiest, but I mean, it's Thanksgiving. I mean, who, you well, know. Well, just butter. So, they explain brown butter. Brown butter is just <laughs> butter that's... Brown butter is just melted and then once it melts, you let it cook for a couple minutes more and the milk solids inside of it uh, start to caramelize. And when they caramelize, they get, it gives you a nutty flavor. Right. So that you just you brown the milk solids in the butter, so it turns brown. So I'm just you know I'm just gonna drizzle it on, and when you drizzle it on the cauliflower, I'm already putting putting some color um, onto the cauliflower. Right. You know, and I'm like halfway there when it comes to color, and this will give it some you know a nice flavor profile. Um, you know, into into the uh, into the cauliflower. So I just you know I just toss that in, and then once we get a little, they all coat. Salt pepper. It? I'm gonna put a little salt on it. I don't. I don't really cook with pepper. I consider pepper a spice. Ah. Um, you know, when I want pepper on certain things, I put it on. If I want cayenne on certain things, if I want allspice or cinnamon, that's like my mentality. Yeah. Uh, for it, and then um, and then we'll just put that right onto uh, a sheet tray. Look at that. And uh, you have some nice little um, you know cauliflower florets that are, ha have a little bit of brown butter. I'm just going to pop them in the oven and let it roast for like 15 minutes or so. And our oven's, uh, is 500 degrees. 500 degrees. Their top? Huh? You care. Ah, it doesn't matter. You care. All right, come sit down. All right, cool. We can leave all the rest of this. We don't need anything else. You want something else to drink? No, I'm good. I have some mezcal. I'm running low on it, but you know. We'll if the bottle's right there. Yeah, so I'm good. Okay, I've got my mezcal. We're set. Pull the chair, put the headphones on. And I'll be good to go. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, can yes, you click yes. on his, uh, the <laughs> box right next to you? Yep, just click it on. The white button at the bottom. Really? At the bottom of the box, there's Once only again, one. Once again, you're having on. to do all that work okay, by you yourself, go. Sam. <laughs> do you want Mike to come over here more? No, what? you're good. Just okay, good. Yeah, you guys don't worry about it. Can you just stay close to the mic? I'm right Mike, here. And you're, you're set. <laughs> um, Mike is mic'd up. Mike's mic'd up. Here, do you want more? Yeah, I'm going to take some more. There, there you go. That's what I got, and then I'll keep it rolling. This is good stuff. You know, I'm on the West Coast, close to Mexico. Can't get better than the mezcal that I have right now. No, you can't. Yeah. Minotauro. It's, uh, it's awesome, right? It is Smoky, awesome. Smoky, delicious. People don't, know, people don't understand. We were talking about this earlier. I don't know that people understand the, the intricacies of, of tequila versus mezcal. And let's, I can put it this way. Every tequila is a mezcal. Not every mezcal is a tequila. Agreed. Right? Agreed to an extent. It's, I mean, obviously, you know. I mean, you it's got to come smokiness. from, it's like champagne. It's got to come from a region to be called tequila. Right. Mezcal is, is just uh, an agave plant turned into a distillate that's not made in the, the province of Jalisco. It's that simple. Right. Right? And it could be from a different breed of agave. Yeah. As opposed to the, the blue. The blue. The blue, whatever that is called. Yeah. All right. Cool having you here. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, thanks for having me. Bye. So we should start by saying you're here for the San Diego Bay Wine Food Festival, right? I am. I am. It's my first time in San Diego. They invited me out. I'm doing a cooking class tomorrow. I'll be doing book signing while I'm out here. Uh, so I'm, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm, I'm to chill out, check out the weather. Do you do, you do this stuff often? I, I do travel a lot. Um, you know, I'm very, lim I'm very particular on what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, actually, I was invited here last year, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it because I was opening up my, um, my, my restaurant. Right. 
Uh, so, but they invited me back again this year and I said, yeah, I have some free time, so I'd love to come down. And, um, so yeah, you know, I mean, food and wines are always a popular thing. You know, you have a lot of, a lot of fans, a lot of foodies, you know, and Th cool this is the, I think this is the biggest food and wine event on the West coast. Really? Which considering that we've got, you know, LA and San Francisco, I think it's a big deal. That is a big deal. There's I mean, a few thousand people. I mean, somebody could probably correct me on that, but I feel like it's at least a couple thousand people in one space for Saturday's grand tasting event, which is, I don't know, 80, 80 restaurants, 50 wineries, yep. olive oil places. I mean, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, and I'll, and I'll be I'll be there uh, tasting. <laughs> You're gonna be there tasting. <laughs> yeah, I know it definitely is. I mean, compared to San Fran, San Francisco is is in my eyes and in a lot of people's eyes, and you know, I mean, it's probably San Fran is probably one of my favorite culinary scenes to dine in. Right. But in a lot of people's eyes, New York is the best uh, city to dine in, and and San Fran is the second. So I mean, to to be on the West Coast and have San Diego be the best, you know, the biggest you know, venue for the wine festival right. compared to San Fran and LA. That's huge. That's awesome. I have to say the group that puts it on a company called Fast Forward Events has done an outstanding job. And you know, the big event really is this grand tasting on Saturday, but there's stuff all week that goes on and they're really pushing the whole like wine thing and, and understanding and learning. And it's, it's really fun. You're, so you're doing a class tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll be at the Macy's, um, Cooking, cooking place at the... Um, what are you making? I am doing an olive oil poached codfish. Yeah. Uh, and I'm serving it over... I mean, classically, we call it... Uh, the Italians call it caponata. Yeah. Uh, and caponata is like an eggplant stew with like yeah, both yeah. stuff. But I'm doing it with a little bit of curry in there and kind of twisting it up a little bit. Mm. But trying to... You know, you think eggplant, you think Indian and stuff. So... Uh, are you doing... The, is it just you in the class or are there other, no, other there's, chefs? there's three other chefs. You have uh, Ed Lee. Yeah. Oh, um, Ed, Top Chef. From Top Chef. I mean, from Top, from top Chef. Yep. Uh, yep. Was a restaurant in Kentucky. You yep. have uh, Sarah from Chicago from the same season. Yeah. And you have Lindsay from... You know, you have three people from the uh, Texas season... Lindsay, Sarah, and Ed. Um, I know Ed personally. I just did a pop up with him in New York a couple weeks ago. What fun, huh? Yeah, I'm friends with Sarah um, for a couple years now. So <clears throat> okay, so let me ask you this question. You have said that prior to being on Top Chef, you didn't really watch Top Chef. Mm -mm. So who, well, who, who said what? Who? How'd you get into it? Well, what happened was, is uh, you know, I, I worked a lot, obviously, running, you know, running a, a powerhouse restaurant, and uh, I would come home when it'd be the end of the show sometimes, and my wife would watch. I'm like, why are you watching this stupid show? These guys can't cook. Sorry, Fabio, I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 um, no, Fabio's a great cook and a good friend. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, you know, and a charming I, fucking accent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to, I just want to give him a big kiss on the cheek. Yeah, every time, right? Uh, um, every time he speaks. <laughs> So, you know, I, I really didn't know much about the show because I really didn't watch this. I thought it was stupid and I thought it was like, you know, whatever. And then people come to me like, you know, I have a lot of tattoos. I'm an arrogant guy. I, I speak my mind. I'm very tough in the kitchen. And like, you should go on the show. You should go on the show. And uh, <laughs> last inauguration, I ran into Tom Colicchio and I was cooking for all the she celebrity chefs who were doing cooking, you know, raising money for Obama. And uh, I told him, I said, you know, he's like, this is a great land. This is awesome. One of the best lands I've ever had. I said, yeah, you know, I said, I, I, you know, I watched your show once or twice. I said, I think it sucks. I think all your cast sucks. I said, you know, if I was on there, I'd kick everyone's ass. And, you know, next week I got a phone call. Come on. <laughs> and so from you saying it's a stupid show, nobody can cook. I don't like the show. They go like this. You want to be on and you go, yes. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I, the, the, he goes, do you think you could win? I said, yeah, I definitely think I could win. And he's like, it's not that easy. I said, yeah, I don't think it's that easy. I said, but, I, you know, like, I mean, the talent that you have on there, I said, there's not a lot of real professional chefs with, with big resumes coming from, like, award-winning chefs, Michelin-starred chefs, James Jose Beer Andres. Chefs. Yeah, you know, I was I working. mean, come on, you work for a huge... You have, an, you have an outstanding pedigree. Yeah, I work for a lot of big-name chefs. I mean, yeah. Samuelson and Jose Garces and Jose Andreas and all... All elite guys throughout my career, and um, you know the, the season I went on in Vegas. Then I went on there. And you have Jen Carroll from Eric Repair. You have the Vitaggio brothers. You have Kevin Gillespie. I mean, the list goes on. And it was just, it was a tough season, you know. And I felt like I kind of got a little shaft, and I went home early, and they invited me back, and I, I got to redeem myself. You redeemed yourself in a big way. And look, it's just us talking. Top Chef All Stars. Yeah. You make it to the finale with Richard Blaze. Okay. Should you have won? Hundred percent. I did win. I mean, whoa, 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 whoa. wait, wait, you know, wait, we're all wait. winners at the end of the day. But. No, this is not, this is not <laughs> six-year-olds playing t-ball. I thought I won. You know, I cooked some of the best food I've cooked in my life. Yeah. Um, it, it, was, it was a flawless 
uh, service for me. I, I ran it from top to bottom. I led my team to the finish line. And, uh, you know, Richard did a great job, too. Uh, you know, at that point, it becomes apples and oranges. What do you like better? And, um, you know, they picked him. Why'd uh, they pick him? I don't know. It was really surprising. When we, when we were in lineup and we were going over stuff, like they were just raving about everything I had to do. So I, I have a question. When they're giving their comments, mm -hmm. do you think they're giving their comments not exactly true? Are they trying to mislead the audience a little bit? Well, they always they always do uh, good parts and bad parts about about your food, so they right. can take what they want from it and and and, and then air air that air those things. But they mm. do both parts. But I, I feel like these reality shows, especially the reality competition shows, they're trying to lead you down a path that makes you say, "Oh my God, Mike fucking Isabella's gonna win this!" And then boom, because of shit they said. Yeah. Like, look what he said. Look what Padma said. Look at. By the way, your wife, I've seen pictures of really cute. Thank you very much. But would you leave her for Padma? Uh, definitely not. That's no, okay, not, definitely not my style. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. My wife is right there, and she knows I would leave her for Padma. Uh, I'm yeah. only you kidding. It's not true. I wouldn't leave her for Padma. I mean, she looks pretty hot in a bikini, you know what I'm saying? But uh, Or just here in a bikini. I mean, we were on the Caribbean island. Right. I, you know, I came out. I came, I came Cooking out. with spoons or what? Yeah, I was on a desert island. She's in a bikini. I was like, "Oh, good morning! Oh, hey, I'm up. I'm up now." Okay, so I've heard. I don't want to talk about Top Chef the whole time, but I've heard that they have their cocktails down on the floor beside them. Hundred percent. And sometimes, by the end of the judging, they're corned. Hundred percent. Really? Sometimes even before judging starts. And and you guys, nothing or yes. I mean, can we you can. Drink? I mean, they, they, all they give us is really like beers or wine, and it's, and it's not the good stuff. So, um, right, you know, whatever. So, so you leave Top Chef. Mm -hmm. Then they ask you back for Top Chef All Stars. Yep. There's a very different Mike Isabella in Top Chef All Stars than was in season six. Do you agree? A hundred percent. I mean, everyone knows that. And, and what happened? Well, I, you know, no, m multiple things. I felt I was kind of humbled a little bit by the competition that I dealt with on the Vegas right. season. I thought I grew up a lot after that. Um, and, you know, you have to be careful in what you say and how you say it because you, I didn't realize that I can offend people by things I was saying when I was being sarcastic. So I just kind of really just try to be myself. Was the Mike Isabella that we saw in season six, the Mike Isabella that would have been off screen, off camera in season six? I mean, did you change the way you were all the time or did you just have to change the way you were on TV because you were in that competitive environment? I, I think it's a little bit of everything, you know. I feel like, I, I kind of felt like I grew up, you know. I was a kitchen, I was, when I used to be in the kitchen back in the day, I was a yeller, I was a screamer, I was intense, I was there all the time. Yeah. You know, and, and when you go on and to start doing your own business and doing things like that, you change who you are and you grow up a little bit. And I definitely felt that I grew up and... You know, and uh, at the end of the day, I was just trying to have fun, fun doing it when I was on the All Star season, and uh, I met a lot of great people, um, and uh, I had a great time, and I put up good food. You know, you put up great food. Honestly, uh, Top Chef All Stars was really the last Top Chef that I watched. Yeah, and I don't. You know, you get into a, you get into a, a routine, and you you get onto a show. Doesn't matter what it is, you watch a bunch of it, and then at some point, it changes. But there was something that, that I wanted you to win so hmm. badly, and I couldn't watch it the night that it aired. So I recorded it, and <laughs> I couldn't watch it till whatever night that was. I can't remember what night of the week it was. We'll call it a Tuesday. Couldn't watch it Wednesday. I watched it Thursday. Every time somebody started saying, oh my God, did you? And I'd have to plug my ears and go, I don't want to hear. <laughs> I want to be surprised by the outcome. Yeah. And I was pissed. Yeah, I was a little disappointed. You no, know, you were a lot disappointed. Yeah, no, I was upset. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, I really when after you have a break in between the finals and, yeah. and whatever. So when I had that break, I was the only guy. I quit my job because I was opening up my own restaurant. Yeah. So I was working with. How I, big a break is that? How long? It was a couple months. Yeah. So what I was doing is I was working in different kitchens around the city, uh, learning different techniques. I was working out at the gym. I was eating right. I really focused. I went back. I went back to win, and I won, I won almost every competition in in the Bahamas. Um, when I went back, I went almost every single one. Right. And uh, I, went, I, I went. I don't know how that happened. And I went back to like I was just crushing everybody, and and 
everyone was like surprised because I was like, I knew, I knew no one would train the way I did, you know, and I, I busted my butt. And uh, I trained with Brian Vitaggio for a while in his kitchens and all over the city. I was working in pastry kitchens and, you know, I... Because you I, didn't know pastry. I didn't know pastry. And I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing, making ice creams, making cakes, doing this and that if we had more challenges. And, you know, I was working with different flavor profiles and talking to everyone and just hanging out with chefs and be like, yo, talk to me about food. Talk to me about this. Talk to me about that. By the way, huge lessons there for anybody that's watching. And I was it's just thinking It's way that. beyond the, the, yeah. the food environment. If you want to do something well, put yourself in that world. Right. Oh, yeah. It's like, how hungry are you? And right, and you were you were really hungry. Clearly, coming in seventh in season six pissed you off. Oh, big time! And I, and you believed you, you deserved better than that, and and look where you ended up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, you know, I wasn't I wasn't gonna let that happen to me again. And you know, I didn't win many challenges on the Vegas season, but I was in the top a lot. You right, know, right, right, and right, right. And I felt like I kind of got like the short stick at the end, but you know, I, I, again. By the way, back. as far as I'm concerned, you won Top Chef All Stars. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> now we're all winners at this point. I mean, everyone's doing so well. Everyone's opening restaurants. But that's actually not true, well, and I can't name names. But but I could go down the list. I'd have to see some faces and and research a little bit. But clearly, some people have done better than others. Agreed. Yes. But I still think from the All Star season, everyone's doing really I well. See. So let's talk about let's talk about your restaurants. Let's talk about where you. So w was in the end, Top Chef a great thing for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I love Top Chef. I'll, I'll, I'll always love Top Chef for what they've done, giving me the opportunity. Right. And I had to take advantage of it, and I did. Yeah. Um, you know, without Top Chef, I'd probably be working for somebody right now, and it gave me the opportunity to help raise money to open up my restaurants. So first restaurant, Graffiato, shirt you're wearing right now, cool shirt by the way. I love the bowling style, the bowling, you know, whatever shirt Thank style you. of it, the short sleeve. Everybody wears those. Yeah, they usually wear the gray ones. They look like more like gas station uh, t-shirts. Yeah, <laughs> got it. You know, so got it. So when did uh, when did Graffiato open up? A year and a half ago, it opened. Um, it's been it's been a zoo since we've opened. It's been awesome. I mean, well received, great reviews. Yeah, it's a very busy, fun restaurant. Yeah. You know, you put your heart and soul in it, hundred percent, everything into it. You know, and uh, that's my baby. It'll always be my baby, and uh, I have a great team there. And, you know, I live three blocks from there. I hang out there every day. Oh, that's so cool. Isn't it good? That's a great yeah, site, Three blocks. Too. That's amazing. Okay, so then you open Bondolera. Yep, in Georgetown. So, so your food influences mm -hmm. Italian because you're a Jersey boy. Yep. Grandmother influenced food, right? Yep. Mediterranean food. Yep. Right? Jose, uh, you work in his restaurant. You're doing that kind, that kind of Spanish-inspired food, right? Well, I was doing, I was, I was running Zetinia, so that was like Greek, Lebanese, and oh, Greek, Eastern, Lebanese. Okay, Eastern sorry, Mediterranean. Sorry, sorry. Okay, Eastern Mediterranean. So, Mexican comes from where? Well, I, I, you know, now people don't know, as when I worked in Philadelphia, I used to work for uh, Douglas Rodriguez, who was known as the godfather of Latin uh, cooking. He's a James Beard winner, and he has like yeah. four books. I was his sous chef for about a year and a half, and then I went to work with, I was working with Jose Garces, who's, yeah. who's an iron chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I yeah. opened up El Vez, which is a Mexican restaurant. So people don't know that a, a Can lot. Can you pass of, me the mezcal? Sorry. Yeah, sure. Um, oh God. Pe people don't realize <laughs> that, that I that neat. I cooked Latin and Mexican food for a couple of years. Right. Uh, back in the day, and that was one of the one of the reasons why I, um, you know, when I went on Top Chef, I knew that I had a lot of different techniques and styles. I could do modern. I could do Spanish. I could do Latin. I could do Greek. I right. could do Middle Eastern. I could do Italian. I could do anything, and that was one of the reasons why I went on because I was so rounded, and I'm not your classical. Uh, French trained chef. Okay, so tell me the thinking. The obvious first restaurant for you should have been Italian, I'm guessing, right? Well, you know, a lot of my training was Greek. Mm. Uh, and every, you know, I ran Zetinia for four years. Before that, I was running Kima in Atlanta for about two years. And those are those like more Greek. Kima's all Greek, was one of the top five in the country. Oh. Zetinia was, you know, it was a one of a kind, Eastern Mediterranean, very Greek influenced. And that's when I left there, everyone thought I was going to open up a Greek restaurant, and I, and I opened up an Italian because I am Italian. Uh, right. That would, was my guess is why you would have yeah. done that. But you know, so I wanted to have a place where I can go eat, you know, get a good pizza, get a good pasta, get some, you know. But what's the best thing on the menu? Oh, sorry. What sells most on the menu? Well, what sells most and what's my favorite are two different things. So answer the first one. What sells the best on the menu? Um... In the Ninioki is probably one of the top sellers. Um, right. You know, in the summertime we have this dish called the corn uh, angulote. Uh, right. That's probably the tough, the top one, or one of our pizzas is called the White House pizza. 
which mm. is oh it's a good name yeah it's, it's which all, is it's, what it's all white pizza stiff um <laughs> with telegio cheese then we have to do, we used to do some prosciutto on top with a black pepper honey oh god so, so cheese cured meat and honey you know instead of a plate put it all on a pizza yeah wow i yeah. love the sound oh, of that that's so yeah good. and you couldn't have made that today instead of fucking cauliflower right. <laughs> the holidays are coming up <laughs> hey, look at they got the white house and the jersey shore look at yeah right here look and at we got both men you got the jersey like shore it. on there too yeah I, but, I, I had to throw that in there by the way the first thing that mike's people Ascent, uh, when I knew he was coming, I said I want to make something. The first thing that your people sent was about 75 ingredients. And I go, that is not what this show is. This show is simple, easy to make. <laughs> people should be able to watch without even knowing what the recipe is. Yeah. Duplicate it. By hey, the way. Do we need to check the cauliflower? Can I'm, you I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Can okay, you good, smell right. the cauliflower? <laughs> yeah, it's cooking. It's roasting. I got the black. There. Do you want to see it to tell if it's ready? Yeah, I can take a look at it. It's not ready, but I'll take a look at it. Okay, we don't. Then if it's not ready, forget it. No, I just want to look at no, it. No, forget it. No. Okay. Sit. Right? Sit we trust you. Yeah, he was I, I mean, so. I can, I can see it from there. It's still white. All right, good. See? Nice. Oh, here, watch. Let me just do this. I'm pissed I'm not having there. that White yeah. House it's pizza. It's, 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 it's getting there. It's getting some golden brown. My <laughs> wife wants the White House pizza. Will you send right. it to her? Yeah, I'll send it to you. No problem. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll express it. Yeah, thanks, I'll, I'll, I'll Uber it over. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So so let's talk about Bondolero for a second. So yeah, we opened up Bondolero about six months ago. Yep. In Georgetown. It's a hot spot. Yeah. Huge drink program. We got, we got um, margaritas on tap. You know, we have really? a we, yeah, we have about like twenty something cocktails. It's really, really good. It's yeah. probably one of the strongest parts of the restaurant. Lots of tacos. It's a fun, it's a fun place. Um, you know, we've uh, evolved it a lot. You know, kind of tam tamed it down. We were doing some really fun stuff. People weren't fully getting it, but now we toned it down a little bit. Six months ago. Six months ago. I, undoubtedly, you've heard about Guy Fieri's restaurant in New York. The review that he has a restaurant in New York. Times Square. No way. <laughs> no, are you? I swear to God, I didn't even know. I didn't know that guy cooks. So the New York Times just reviewed it. What? <laughs> scathing. <laughs> scathing. Scathing. Scathing fucking review. Wait, and you saw he actually responded today. He was on the Today Show. Mm -hmm. People are calling it the worst review <laughs> that has ever come out of the New York Times. Why would they even review him? He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not that type of cook. I mean, uh, they reviewed it because they felt, that, at least here's what they said. They feel that the category, sort of American comfort food, right. is important enough. And enough people like it that they felt like it should be. And he's an important, whether you like him or not. Do you like Guy Fieri? Uh, sure. I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't, you don't know him. I don't know him, and I, I've never eaten any of his food. So, I mean, as far as I know, the guy's cool on TV. I, I, li I like Dinner Drivers and Dive. I think that's a right, awesome right, show. Right, right. Um, and, I, and I watched it a lot. Okay. You know. So, they, so the, the argument was that, that that style of food is so important to basic, everyday Americana. And you open up a 500-seat restaurant in Times Square... Yeah, he's probably making millions off of Come it. Come on, though. it should be reviewed. So Agreed. they reviewed it, and they went four times, and apparently it was horrid, 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 horrid. <laughs> you got to read it. You will, it will blow your mind. Will they get negative stars? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but I guess my question was, and so Guy Fieri defending it this morning on the Today Show said, look, it's two months out. So what? That's what I said. I, my reviewer came I felt in day like that three was, of Bondalero. I felt like that was Ooh. a terrible... Terrible defense. Yeah, that's no excuse. You got to go look, in there with your I don't team. own a restaurant, so I don't have a leg to stand on. But honestly, if you're not doing everything as well as you can in the first week, yeah, come on, what's going to happen at the end? Oh my God, too much. That's no. That's no excuse. That's a, that's a cop out. That's that's. And by the way, here, look at the screen. That's it. He believed that. What was the reviewer's name? Um, Wells. Pete, uh, Wells. Pete Wells. Pete. He believed that Pete Wells had an ad, an agenda. Please. He was looking to screw him. Well, listen, I, you know, again, like I, I don't know Guy Fieri personally. Um, you know, I don't. He doesn't come from a from a, a big background of pedigree of cooking. I mean, he's a TV. He's a TV guy. TV guy. And there's nothing wrong with that. TV people. I think he's got people. eleven restaurants, though. No, really. I didn't yes. even know. I didn't even know he had seven. One. How many boys? Seven or eleven? It's seven or eleven. We'll look into it. Shannon thinks it's seven. I, I, she's I, I from Ohio, even... and she separated chickens when she was younger. Is that where Guy's so Restaurant is in Ohio? And she lost her virginity in a cornfield, so <laughs> take it for what it's worth. 
Oh God. Oh, I need, God. I need, I'm gonna take out check it take a look at that cauliflower and I can smell it. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> go check. Uh, look, I say this all the time. When when you're cooking something, use your nose. Use all your senses. Oh, it smells yummy. Not Ooh, as good as a white pizza. There. My house pizza, pizza butt good. Yeah, what do you need? Oh no, this is my spoon. This We're like two minutes out. Can you just oh, stop oh, the oh, oven yes. then, so we can buy ourselves a little more time? Yep. Let's just turn it off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yum. Be careful. Cancel. There you go. All right, and I'll put that down. Let's keep that like almost closed. So there you go. Okay, cool. All right. And we have all the time in the world now. Come sit down. Look at that. Perfect time. So when he walks I in can tonight, smell it. he walks in tonight, and I'm like, "Do you need this?" He goes, "I can make anything work." <laughs> oh, you want the oven? At, what, I go, "What do you want the oven at? 500?" He goes, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> yeah. If I turned it to 200, trust me, it wouldn't have been whatever. <laughs> it would have been, dude. My shit's not cooking. <laughs> I would have turned it up when you weren't looking. Don't worry about. It. I got it. Sabotage. <laughs> oh God. Uh, let's see. Graffiato has a. A uh, pizza oven, mm -hmm. big wood oven. Wait, double entrance. Yeah, I I've never, I've never heard of that before. I had a customly made from Woodstone uh, for me. Woodstone, by the way, great, great ovens. Great ovens. But doesn't the double entrance mm -hmm. lose heat? No, twice well, as fast as. No, I mean those those ovens are, are are meant to keep it in, even with the hole in it, like it, it's blown on heat. But we just keep it filled with wood, so we keep it around seventeen hundred degrees. Yeah. Um, one side is for the pizzas. One side is for like like you know oven roasted octopus or oven roasted uh, chicken or scallops or yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. Um, but no, it's awesome, and I put a bar around it so people could sit around it. And uh, I just wanted you know people are so intrigued by what goes on, whether it's on Top Chef or any other cooking show, but they right. want to know what goes on in the kitchen. So I, when I design my restaurants, I keep all the kitchens open. So um, who doesn't like that? You know, you have to keep it clean and keep it tight and keep it professional. And um, but you're going to do that anyway. So that's what I do. Every while day. you do it, put it on display. Let yep. people see what's going on. People love people it. People love to see that stuff. Yeah, and like the people who come in for lunch, they'll see us. We're breaking down whole lambs, whole pigs, you know, whole fish, and wow. and they're always asking questions like, you know, when we when we're, when we're taking it apart and stuff like that. It's right at the bar. They're eating their pizza or their pasta, and we're breaking down a whole lamb. And yeah. you're popping the eyes out and whatever. Yeah, you know, pop a little tempura batter. We'll fry them off. <laughs> oh, you know, show a little sweet and sour. <laughs> Are you me? She can't even look. She wants the White House <laughs> pizza in the worst way, but you just lost her on the. You gotta come to DC. Out of the house. <laughs> yeah. Do you like the? Um, do you like the uh, the glow of the Top Chef limelight? You know, it, it's cool. Um, I, I used to I used to love it. Uh, and then I, then I started getting a little tough sometimes. It's tough when you're married. In what, in what sense? Well, you know, it's like you know, like sometimes you just want to you know you want to either be left alone or you want to go out to eat or you want to do certain things or you have you know you with your wife and um, sometimes it just does, it doesn't end. Like you know, like I'll be eating dinner and. People come up to me like, you know, I don't, I don't want to be that person, but can I get a picture with you as like I have a spoon in my mouth, you know? And yeah. uh, sometimes it's tough and my mom, my wife gets a little, um, you know, she used to get a little agitated, but now it's fine. Everything's cool. And for me, it's, it's, it's definitely calmed down a lot. It's just in the restaurants, you know, whether I'm in my restaurants or whether I go to a restaurant, people recognize me. But right. uh, it's cool. You know, I enjoy it, um, you know. <laughs> You're pretty active on social uh, media, right? Yeah, I'm pretty I active. see you tweet a lot. Hey, I'm going from uh, Graffio to Bondolero. Come have a drink, that kind of thing. Yep, yep. Is that important to uh, what goes on these days? I just want to let people know I'm in the restaurants and right. I'm there. And that's a big part of it. And I I've been traveling a lot with the book and, and you know, doing research and development for my new upcoming restaurants. And uh, you know, whenever I'm there, I, I try to have people come because people always ask me when I'm around. So yeah. I, I always try to tweet and stuff like that. Hey, but, Mike, why don't you throw out your uh, hashtag for, every, for all the fans out there? Yeah, I mean, I mean whoever wants to follow me on Twitter, it's, it's Mike, Mike Isabella DC. There you go. Um, not Mike twice. Not Mike twice. Mike Isabella DC. <laughs> you know, follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can, you know, see what I'm doing, see when I'm traveling, when I'm in San Diego, when I'm in LA, when I'm in New York, uh, or when I'm just at the restaurants chilling out, having a margarita or having a bourbon at Graffiato. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you watch the Food Network? I do watch the Food Network. What do you, what do you watch? Um, you know, my wife actually keeps it on all day long. She does. All day long. She loves to cook. She cooks a lot. So, you know, I watch a lot of Dinners, Divers, and Dive. Uh, you yeah. know, Paul is on. Giada is on. Those are the types of shows yeah. that we – and um, Barefoot Contessa. I love Barefoot Contessa. She's Behind so, the garden. Yeah. She's like – she always does like a nice little – push those these little nice little parties. She'll get flowers and she'll do – like go to the farmer's market, get good product. <laughs> and like that's the Isn't way my – Isn't that a bit – 
It, no, that's the way my wife likes to do things. Like but she, but everything's for Jeffrey. It, that's that's a little weird. I'm making Jeffrey's favorite. So, okay, <laughs> so let's, let's play a game then. Let's play F, Mary Kill, right? <laughs> oh, God. Let's play. Okay, Paula Dean. <laughs> Paula Dean. <laughs> Paula Dean. Wait, wait, wait. Paula Dean. Don't throw Sandra in. Ina Garten. Yeah. Um, Guy Fieri. <laughs> yes, Guy Fieri. <laughs> No, I know what's going to happen there. He's not banging Guy Fieri. I, no. He's probably going to kill him. I'm not banging. I, I I'm can't banging. find anything. So, oh, do you know who Sarah Moulton is? Uh, not mine. <laughs> okay, yes. Paula Dean, Ina Garten, Sarah Moulton. There you go. F. Mary Kill. I mean, you know. I, I, no, I don't know. You have to tell us, Mike Isabella. Oh, well, this is... This, this. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll do I'll do one uh, I don't want to you know yeah, just say come on now oh, it's just it. you and me talking Paula oh, Dean yeah, right. Paula yeah, Dean where you got Sarah Moulton from I have no idea Kelly but that's perfect Paula Dean Ina Garten Sarah Moulton I, you know, you know, for, I know what I would do do I have to you know uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a killer you know like for me I'm, I'm uh, it doesn't matter you agreed to play Paula Dean Ina Garten, Sarah Moulton. If I had to do any of them, it would be Sarah. If oh. I had to marry any of them, it would be Ina. Right. Ina, whatever. You're killing Paula Dean. Is that what you're saying? I guess so. You Sorry, know, I'm not, a butter, I'm not a butter fan. Sorry, Paula. I like olive oil. Fan. You're a brown butter fan, and she doesn't know that, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't do that. Hey, I got a quick question for Mike. Yeah. Um, is this the Paula Dean? Uh, or sorry, is this the Padma in the bikini that you saw oh. in person? Oh, I can't. Cut. Yeah, pretty similar to that. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> pretty similar. To he's that. sort of. It's There's so funny, you know what? He kind of woke that. me up that morning. You, you know? want to know? Whoa. He's not really even looking, <laughs> right? He sort of looks a little bit and he comes back. I, he's look, embarrassed. By the way, is there any way we can get a shot of Shannon laying down on the ground over here? <laughs> I know you can't see right her, now. but she's. She's. I know. <laughs> she's laying in the cornfields. <laughs> so let's just. We'll talk about your book and then we'll be done with you. Okay. Throw me out. So here's what I believe. Um, I believe that this book, Mike Isabella's Crazy Good Italian. It's right there on the monitor. Had a name before this name. And was the name Flavors from a Jersey Italian? It was. That, that was the original name. How do I, I know that? I don't know how you know that, but I mean, you know, you find things out. You know, you just, right. I guess you just pull it from the air. Yeah, you did I, your homework. I do my homework. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so who, who decided that flavors from a Jersey Italian didn't work and crazy good Italian made more sense? Well, what happened was originally, you know, you, you do a, um, you know, I put a whole proposal together for, for, for a book. And for the... Uh, for my original book. And that's that. Yeah. And I have to put recipes together. And, they, and then I asked for a name for the book. So I just put, you know, I, I'm, everyone knows me. You know, a lot of people call me Jersey Mike or Mike or whatever from the show. Everyone knows me from Jersey, even though I don't live in Jersey. Do you know, do you know there's a, uh, a sandwich chain called Jersey Mike? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so I, I decided to call it... Uh, Flavors from a Jersey Italian, you know, because right. it's not, I, you know, honestly, I've never been to Italy before. So that's what, when people ask me what kind of food it is, I say it's, Jer Jersey, Italian. it's Jersey Italian. So who changed that? Well, when we were talking, it, 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 you know, my, um, you know, my book company thought it, you know, it might kind of just, it might not sell as much, you know, to a West Coast person or to a middle, you know, to With the America, Jersey Italian? With the Jersey Italian. So, and then also too, when I was in the- that's that's a that's a reasonable point to me. Yeah, and then when I was in the finale uh, of of the All Stars, you know, when Gail had my pepperoni sauce, she's like, "Mike Isabel, this is crazy business. This is this is amazing." I gotcha. And so we decided to put you know do it called cr Crazy Good Italian because it was just like you know there's a lot of unique stuff, there's a lot of different stuff, there's a lot of you know classic stuff. We've talked about you coming on uh, tonight the past few nights, and somebody said ask him about the pepperoni sauce, but I think I know you just you, there was pepperoni. You needed to make a sauce. You just. You pulled that out of your ass. Is yeah. that right? You know, honestly, I never did it before in my life. And, um, you know, when we when I cook, I don't use a lot of ingredients because I like to build my flavor. So if I use yeah. an onion, I'll use an onion in a couple of different textures, whether it's pickling it or frying it, whatever it is. Right, and, right. And I knew I was going to use pork shoulder. Yeah. I was going to braise it. So I was like, where can I in implement pork and not use bacon because everyone uses bacon, you know? Of course. So I saw a couple sticks of pepperoni laying around. So I grab them. And, and Richard Blaze is looking at me. He's like, what are you going to do with pepperoni? And by the way... The reason you should have won, but whatever. you know, and and it was something that no one's ever seen before, and everyone was kind of blown away by it. Like, pepperoni and it's in the sauce. restaurant, and it's in the book. Yep, in both places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, your book has um, quotes on the back, uh, nice things said about you from Tom Colicchio, mm -hmm. 
who everybody knows if they're a Tom Chef, uh, Top Chef fan. Gail Simmons, is she as nice as I imagine her to be? She's a sweetheart. Gail is yeah. a sweetheart, yeah. Yeah. How would you, um, how would you characterize uh, Tom Clicchio? You know, I always looked up to Tom, even when I was in culinary school in New York, when he used to work at Gramercy Tavern. I mean, that guy's been a, a celebrity chef in the New York world for years, for 20, 20 years or yeah. so. And uh, he's, he's always been an icon to yeah. me. And to, nice guy? Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal guy. And he's from Jersey, too. Yeah, yeah. And apart from all the things we've said about uh, Padma physically, yeah. how would you characterize her? Uh, I, you know, I get along with Patma. She's 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 really cool. Um, you know, originally when I was in the first season, I didn't really like her that much. Um, I felt like you know, whatever. I mean, you know, I like Padma. I think she does her job well and she does it good. But you know, towards the end, of even All Star season, every huh. every competition she went against me. I mean, when I went against San Ana, Ana Antonia head to head, she went against me. When I went against Richard, she went against me. When I when why I went do you, against why do you think that was? You think she had something I, against you? Just no, I just don't think she's, she, she. I don't think she likes my food. She doesn't like your food. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, everyone, no, it is what it is. Yeah, They're, food's opinionated. You know what? That's exactly right. Food's opinionated. You know. And Eric Repair, by the way, who said, uh, referring to this. I'm going to do my best Eric Repair accent. <laughs> you truly want to hurry to the kitchen and try the, his uh, recipes. <laughs> yeah. Is he a cool guy? He's a, he's a really cool guy. I imagine. He, he actually, he came in and ate at Graffiato when we first opened. Um, I was really nervous. I cooked. Did he order fish? Uh, he ordered a lot of things. We gave, yeah. we gave him everything. And then we sent him out the corn angelote, and he was just blown away out of it because we juiced the corn. So wait a second. Eric Repair. Uh-huh. It has to be in the top, what, five of all chefs in New York City? I, in the world. I mean, In the he, world, right? He's the only chef in New York to have four stars for over 20 years. Okay. So Eric Repair comes into Graffiato. Does he pay? Um, did I charge him? How many people did he come in with? I, it was him and another, another French chef. So did, do you know, did you get a phone call with somebody saying... Uh, uh, Monsieur Isabelle, uh, this is uh, Francois. Monsieur Repair's uh, season. Monsieur Repair would like to come into the restaurant tonight and uh, table for two. <laughs> Just know they will be out at 8 p.m. Uh, he, he, um, actually, Jen Carroll texted me. She's like, Eric's in town. He wants to come and eat tonight. I said, What time? She's like, This time. I was like, Cool, set, done. You would have thrown people out of the restaurant 100%. with your bare hands to get them in. Not 100%. <laughs> so does he, does he pay? Does he? I don't, I don't remember if I charged him or not. I don't have that answer. Um, I don't. Uh, I, if it was pro I probably didn't. Yeah. But, you know, and, and also like two days later, she's, you know, Jen Cal texts me. She's like, I just want to let you know this. She's like, you should be really happy. She's like, Eric's walking around saying that fucking corn angelote was fucking amazing. <laughs> uh, so, Bravo. Well know, done. Yeah, so yeah. I, was, I was really. Jersey boy. Nice. Yeah, right. I was really impressed. I've yeah, met a, yeah, lot yeah, of, yeah. a lot of great people. I mean, Giada's been in twice, you know. Wow. And. I mean, people keep coming back, and that's. Does okay. she have an unusually large head? Seriously, it's just us talking. <laughs> it is weirdly oversized, is it not? Uh, no, I don't know. You know, I, mean, I, I definitely think she's she's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she's definitely. You know, if we were playing that game, that's she's the one. <laughs> <laughs> and not the one you're gonna kill. Yeah. Wait a second. Not the one I'm gonna kill. Not the one I'm gonna marry. She's Would the yellow. <laughs> if the Food Network called you tomorrow afternoon, uh -huh. what's that guy's name? That little guy that hates my guts. If the Food oh. Network called you tomorrow afternoon and said, you know what? We're loving what you're doing. Loving it. Love the edge of season six. You softened a little in All-Stars. <laughs> if you bring back the edge, we'd love to do a Jersey Italian Mike Isabella show. Are you in? Yes or no? Yeah, sure. Why not? There you go. Just like that. Just like that. I mean, you know, it's in my blood. How TV's you in your blood. I, I, I just, I just, contr I just try to control it. I had the time, you know. I mean, listen. I mean, something like that. You have to make it. I mean, I guess, you know. Yeah. See, I mean, that's what I think. T of. TV is life changing for your businesses. It puts, it puts butts in seats like you don't even really think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of. So okay, so if you could design your own Mike Isabella show for Food Network, what would it be? You know, I don't know. I don't really think about. Um, Come on, late show, at night, show, lying in bed. What's your wife's name? Stacy. Laying at night. <laughs> Laying in bed late at night, Stacy goes, Mike, if the Food Network called, what would you do? You got to have a little bit of an idea. I there. actually I don't. I, you know, I don't really, you know, that's not, I don't go for TV. I don't apply for TV. I don't do any of that stuff. That's not. But if they called, you'd be there. I would do it. If they, yeah. if they had a show in, in, in mind for me. In mind I, for you. And yeah, I like yeah, the yeah. idea of it, I would do it. But I don't apply for, like, TV is not what I do. But so, wait, you've got people, mm -hmm. agents and managers and yep. whatever, and that kind of PR people. Do you ever think to say to them, 
hey, why don't you make a phone call to the Food Network? No, you know, here's or to, what, or to PBS. Do you like Ming Tsai? Yeah, I love Ming Tsai. Ming, Ming Tsai is hilarious. Ming Tsai is hilarious. She's got a very sub, uh, PBS, successful career on PBS. Do. Would you rather do that? I, I would. A PBS. Is, so why why not reach out to a PBS then? I'm just uh, right now in, in, in the stage of my career. I'm I'm really focused on my, on my restaurants. I got to get my Greek restaurant open. I want to make sure. Oh, so let's talk about that. Yeah. All right. So we've got Italian mm -hmm. Graffiato. We've got Mexican Bondolera. Yep. We've got Greek coming up called Kopnos. Kopnos, which is means smoke. Smoke. Yeah. And so, how will that manifest itself in the restaurant? Well, basically, we have uh, it's, it's a lot of wood cooking. Got it. And then we have um, we have two huge grills that have uh, rotating spits above them. Holy! So yes. we have eight eight rotating spits above How two big? grills with they're, your arms. Um, they're about five feet long. Yeah. The, the spits. So we have all whole animals. We have <clears> whole goats, whole lambs, whole sucklings, whole chickens, and we do all whole animal. Look you at know. you right there. Uh, Kapnos and G. Yeah, and G. G. G is is the logo from Graffiato yeah. that I took. And we're gonna stamp that on uh, the window, basically. And in the daytime, it's gonna be a sandwich shop. You know, classic. You know, with chicken parm, meatball. Love it, love it. All that stuff. And at nighttime, it's forty seats. We're gonna do a, a classic Italian menu where it's uh, it's forty bucks. It's four courses. You get an antipast, a pasta, a choice of fish or meat, and a and a, and a dessert. But prefix. Prefix. No choices. No nice. Choice I yet. love that. How no, great is that yeah. for a chef? No choice. Just fish or meat. Nice. Where, so a pasta of the day, an antipasta of the day. You know, meat of the day. I'm loving that. Yeah, so it's kind of more classic Italian, and forty bucks is not bad. You can come in and get a four course meal and eat and leave. And if you want to get some wine or some beer or just some water or some iced tea or or a coffee, whatever you want. But I mean, it's not. That's a good price to get four course meal. You no, know? I hear you absolutely. So, You're a cool guy, Mike Isabella. Thank you very much. It's fun having you here. I hope you like San Diego. I'm I'm super stoked about checking it out again. You know, I I came in late last night and I've been, you know, doing doing the events all. All day today, but I'm I'm stoked. I'm gonna, you know. What time's your class tomorrow? People can't. It's sold out. I know it's sold yeah, out. Yeah, I think it's at a three three to four o'clock. Three like to four. That. Yeah, something like that. And then Saturday, there's the big. Uh, and there's Book still signing. tickets for the. There's still tickets uh, available for the uh, the grand tasting. Yep. It's from uh, twelve o'clock to three o'clock. It used to be twelve to four, but people were getting too drunk. Oh, that's a good thing. I'm gonna get drunk. They stopped it. You can get drunk. And what time is your book signing there? Uh, from 1 to 1.30. All right. So if you go to the Grand Tasting, San Diego Bay Wine and Food Festival, this weekend, Saturday, you can actually see this guy, Mike Isabella. You can buy this book. He'll sign the pepperoni fucking sauce page. He'll <laughs> sign the back page. He'll sign, he'll sign right over Eric Repair's name if you want. Some nice stuff in here. Yeah, it's, it's cool. All right, man. Thanks for coming. Wait, we got, I, I, oh, we got cauliflower. Kick Let's go. Come on. Yeah. We gotta go wait, wait. Let's, Let's run the intro. We have an bring, intro. Oh, wait. Run. We have a cooking intro. Okay, wait. Sorry. Okay, ready to roll the cooking intro? Two years and you just can't remember. I can't. It's too, in, too long. I don't <laughs> All right, remember. Let's okay. do it. Go. Yes. You know what? I just have this little bit of a That's fear of, yeah. of putting, um, yes, put it on that, thank you. Oh, we can go in there, yeah. Let's put it back in here. And by the way, notice how much it shrunk, right? Oh, when yeah. the cauliflower was like up to there, it shrinks way down. So make more than you think you need. You always want extra. So all this now is thinly sliced red onion, Freshly uh, grated pecorino cheese, a lot of mint, mm. and that's it. And we we'll squeeze a little lemon on it. Oh, nice! Wow! Wow! Nice, nice, nice. nice. You want to eat some with me? I'll try it with you. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I don't want to <laughs> make you do something you don't want to do. So, so you have the roasted, and then you have a little bit of the you know fresh onion, a little bit of fresh. Fresh mint to lighten it up because you have a little you know butter and some cheese in there, so it's really simple. It's just a it's just a nice dish. This is it's on the it's on the menu um, at the restaurant. Hopefully, it tastes good. It's terrible. I want more. <laughs> wow. Nice light. It's gonna be a perfect change from all the heavy fucking mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes and, <laughs> and all the stuff that people are making on Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's a great dish. So 
Throw a little mint in there, it never hurts. I like, you say, here's the chef thing, right? When I put stuff in, like, I do like this, right? When these guys do it, they're like this. It's called showering. Shower. It is? Yeah, you shower. There was a name? Yeah, because we, we get yelled at because, you know, kids, young cooks, they come out and they put a little salt on things and smack them. You get smacked in the head or you smack in the hand. Like, what are you doing? You have to shower your meats. And so when you throw it up high, it all spreads out, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you, you're throwing it, it's like kind of like, you see how it's like evenly. It's not, if you do it here, it's like more, you know, I you like get a bigger spot, you know, like you're doing clumping. So you want to shower, shower your food with the. Um, do, you still, do you still yell in the restaurant? Uh, yeah. Not as much. Not do you, much, you throw things? No. Never. Have you ever thrown things? When you were when you were <laughs> Chef Isabella, Top Chef season six. I threw things across the kitchen before. Yeah, I threw broke plates and stuff like that. Threw food out. Threw food on the floor. Yeah. You know. Um, you ever fired anybody on the spot? Get uh, out of my kitchen right now. I, yeah. How many times? Um, I would say about three times where I was like screaming and yelling, threw them out of the kitchen in the middle of service. <laughs> Started screaming and getting their face, get out of my fucking kitchen. Wow. You know, because they were fucking either had an attitude or they were putting up shit, and I told them don't put put up shit, and they kind of you know I was just in the zone, and they did it, and I throw them out, you know. Yeah, those are the old days, not anymore. Yeah, it's got to come out a little bit. I'm a nice guy now. <laughs> it's gonna come out a little bit. <laughs> uh, go to fixtureslivingcom or Fixtures Living on the Facebook. Like them, tell them that you watch this show and you love them because of us. Kitchen, bath, outdoor. Anything in that world is what they do. They will make your kitchen bath outdoor world infinitely better than you can make it just yourself going to some random ass store and figuring the shit out. Fixtureslivingcom they're there for you. Like Mike Isabella who is here for us tonight. Thanks man, this is a lot of fun. Awesome, thanks for having I me, appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate, hope you have a, a lot of fun in San Diego. Enjoy yourself. I'm sure I will. You need to hang out here and cook for the next couple hours, who cares? <laughs> San Diego Bay Wine and Food Festival, still tickets available for the Grand Tasting on uh, Saturday. And from 1 to 1.30, this man will be there signing his cookbook. Thanks for hanging out. See you Monday. It's Thanksgiving week. We have lots to do next week. Thanks for being here with us. See ya. Okay. <laughs>